Hi you guys, welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, I would like to take the time out to say welcome and hope to see you again and again. Well, I was having some problems with my video and found out that I need to upgrade to a new video card. I picked up this HP Pavilion HPE a few months back. Well, I put the card in and if you want to see the video on that, just click on the upper right hand corner there. After I installed my video card, I found out that I needed to install a new power source. So I found one online. My tech said I should get this one. It's a EVGA 600, a 600 watt 80 plus bronze certified power supply. I picked this up about a month ago, so I'm going to install it now. Apparently, these power supplies will save you some electricity. From what I understand, this is one of the higher end power supplies. It provides all the cables and power for most PCs, supports up to two graphic cards. Okay, let me show you the power cables. Okay, this is the 8 pin 4x4 CPU power cable. This powers the CPU. This is your Molex connector. You'll probably not use it. This will help power your floppy drive if you have one still. It's provided for backwards compatibility. You probably won't use this. You have two serial ATA power cables. So essentially you have six serial ATA power cables. Here's the PCI Express power cable, 8 pin. They call it a 6 plus 2. This will enable you to power two video cards. Here's your 20 plus 4, 24 pin ATX power cable, which plugs into your motherboard. All right, let's install this bad boy. After removing all your power cords and plugs, Lay your computer down on its side like this. And unscrew this screw. Sometimes you can unscrew it with your fingers. Sometimes you'll have to use a screwdriver. Once you have this screw unscrewed, slide the side panel back about an inch and up. Should come out pretty easy. Set that aside. Now that we got the cover off, here is your power source. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take off four screws and remove it, pretty simple. In a sec, I'll show you, once you remove these four screws, in the back bottom, and I'm gonna show you here, there's a little tab you're gonna push down so you'll be able to push the power source back. It releases it, it's kinda of like a little clip. So the only thing that's holding it is these four screws and a tab. Okay, now that we got the screws removed, let's push the tab down and push back to remove the power source. Unless you're a tech, don't disconnect any of the wires. What you want to do is set your new power source next to the old one and remove the old plug and plug the new plug in one at a time so you don't get mixed up. Okay, now we're going to remove the CPU power cable. Okay, we're gonna remove the old CPU power cable and plug in the new CPU power cable. Okay, let's remove now the ATX power cable which powers your motherboard and plug in the new one. It's pretty simple, huh? Okay, on mine, it looks like I'm gonna have to remove this cage so I can access the hard drive so I can install the serial ATA power cable. If you want, you can unclip the front face. It's pretty easy. Take a look at it. You just unsnap it. It comes off really easy. It's a no brainer.
we're going to unplug the serial ATA power cord and install the new one. All right, now we're beyond the halfway point. The last one is my Blu-ray player. We're gonna unplug the serial ATA power cord and install the new one. Once you got them all plugged in, make sure all the, your plugs are snapped in correctly. All your cages are in with all the screws and snaps so it doesn't come unclipped. Look at all your wires. Make sure none of the wires are touching fan blades or any of the components or any of the circuits. Use small ties to position your wires so you know that nothing's going to impair anything else. Okay, now we're ready to close the patient. 
When you put this cover on, make sure you have it out about an one inch. And you're going to slide the front part in first, then down, and then slide it in an inch. And it should lock in. And just go ahead and put the last screw in, and you're done. Plug everything back in, and you're ready to go. All right, can't wait to connect everything and fire this thing up. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope it was very informative. Please check out my other how-to videos. Oh, and check out my new website. There's new items being put in there every day. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and of course, hit the bell. Until then, we'll see you at my next video. Bye!